All right. Hello, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to yet another live stream here on Wu English. My name is Hamza, and as always, uh, I will be your host through this amazing journey. This amazing grammatical journey, actually, I should say, because today is Saturday, and uh, our lesson will be a grammar lesson. So, uh, welcome. I see more people have started to join. So, welcome, guys, and uh, I hope you are ready, and I hope you are excited for the topic that I have chosen for you today. It's a very interesting topic. We will keep talking about verbs because verbs, as I always say, is one of the most important aspects of language. One of the most important vocabulary that you can learn is verbs. And uh, a, a lot of the lessons that you will find uh, in grammar are actually related to verbs. All right, so tenses, for example, are related to verbs. Questions are related to verbs. And the topic of today's lesson, auxiliary verbs, is also related to verbs. So we will see a special kind of verbs that we use in English. And the auxiliary verbs are not main verbs. So they are a little bit different. So we will see how they are different from the main verb. I would love to welcome Amin. I hope, Amin, you are still there. So hello to you if you are still there. My friend, Jen the man, is here as always. So hello, Jen. How is life? How is everything going with you? I hope you are enjoying your uh, weekend. So uh, tell us what's up with you. Jan is in the house, of course. Jan is in the house. Great. So I, I was saying an, an, amazing, an important part of grammar in English are verbs. All right. So we will see today a special type of verbs, which we call auxiliary verbs. Auxiliary verbs. They are very, very important, actually. Pamela, hello to you. Amin is here. Hello to you, Amin. How are you doing? And Hamza also is here. So Hamza, hello to you. And uh, welcome. It's been a while, I think. So how are you doing? How is life uh, going? Uh, how is uh, school as well? I know. I think uh, you guys are still in school. Sophia, it's been a while. Hello to you. It's been a while. I remember we spoke and you said that you had a lot of work last time. So uh, I hope uh, everything is under control right now. So uh, welcome again. Nice, nice. I'm doing very well. So I will share uh, Jen's uh, answer. So everything is good. Thank you for asking. Jen Sophia says, hello, everyone. Sophia, welcome back. Uh, Hamza is here also. I mean, uh, thank you for welcoming everybody. Uh, Pamela, hello to you. Uh, Hamza, of course. So, uh, as I said, so uh, I will be talking about verbs because, as I said, verbs are very important part of, uh, of, uh, like of of English of grammar of English. So it, they are very important. Uh, 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 you can't talk about grammar without talking about verbs. All right. So, uh, for example, tenses are related to verbs. Uh, aspects, continuous, progressive, etc. They are related to verbs. Um, uh, modal verbs are related to verbs, actually. So, yeah, <laughs> fantastic. All right, I want to start actually with something. Let me share with you my screen. So, uh, uh as you guys are joining, uh, let me know in the chat one of these three things. One of these three things, uh, I want to start with a little bit of uh like uh, good vibes, uh, positive uh, feelings, positive things, gratitude. So I want you to share with us the best thing that happened to you this week or that did, did to you this week. Absolutely not. Absolutely. That sentence shows that your English is very good. Uh, share with us in the chat something good that happened to you this week. And maybe some good news you received this week or something that you are proud about uh, this week. So anything, one of these three things or two or three, share with us something that is positive about this week so that this is the end of the week, of course. So let us finish this week with some good vibes, some positive energy so that we can start next week with good and positive energy as well. Amin, thank you. The best thing that happened to me, I got good marks in my exams. That fantastic job. Uh, as a teacher, I know that this is a period of exams here in Morocco. So, yeah, I'm very proud of you. I mean, we are very proud of you. Uh, nice. So, uh, that's some good news to start with. <laughs> I hope your, your English also got some good grades. So, uh, yeah. Um, 
so what, what about the rest of you guys so i mean the good news that i mean got for us today is that he got some good news or some good grades uh, that's that's very very good so what about the rest of you guys let us finish our week with some positive energy for me i think the best thing that happened to me this week is that uh, <laughs> this week finished <laughs> I, I had a lot of work to do this week I, it was a hectic week let me share oh wow wow let us applaud i mean i mean got 20 out of 20 in english by the way this is 20 out of 20 this means that he got a plus a plus in english that's brilliant and that's brilliant uh congratulations to you congratulations uh yeah i was i was saying so uh yes i had a hectic week um a hectic week is a week that was very busy that you had a lot of work when a week where you have like a lot of work we say a hectic week right so i had a hectic week so i'm very proud of myself that i or i'm very happy that i managed to do all the things that i wanted to do this week so I, it, it it took a lot of energy so i was proud uh another thing something i'm proud i'm proud of this week uh oh last one is proud something that you are proud of uh is that today i went to the gym i went back to the gym i i i stopped going to the gym for like two weeks or so so today i went back to the gym let's see real quick and they say he don't nice yes uh Jan the man, that's what you shared with me earlier. So yeah, uh, sometimes uh, Americans they don't respect the grammar, and that's because it's not academic. It's not academic. It's just the street. All right. So they will say, "You uh, is very nice. You is very nice." Normally we study that we say you are very nice, but sometimes they say you is very nice. But that's that's just like. Uh, uh, street English because they don't care about the rules in the street. <laughs> Same thing. I he don't he don't he don't understand anything. He don't understand me. That's also part of street English. <laughs> yes, it's very common actually. Uh, before we go on, let me remind you once more of our special offers on our website. So. Uh, our website uh, is wuenglish.com. You will find amazing books there. You will find amazing uh, stuff. Also, by the way, you can join our Telegram or our uh, WhatsApp group or WhatsApp channel uh, through uh, our website. So please make sure you join us because there we share like uh, uh, a lot of different materials on the WhatsApp channel. What is the third thing uh, to share, sir? Uh, something that you are proud of. Something that you are proud of. Let me go back because I... I I didn't uh, write proud. Something that you are proud of. That's what I wanted you guys to share. So yeah, on our website, as always, we are still dropping more books. We are at 38 books right now that are completely free. Let me go to Nelson Mandela's book, for example. Um, all right, already 34 people have downloaded this book. And 156 person uh, or people have... Uh, like credit you can read it here on the bottom so you can read it right here uh on the on the browser the books are not very like it's just 14 pages you can do it on one uh, one sitting so you can just sit down finish the book and then go do what you were doing um and also you can download the book and this way you can like read it on your own time right uh, so um I hope you will visit our website. It's it's really amazing, and uh, we are dropping we are dropping very soon. We are dropping our new application. In the application, there are a lot of amazing features that that really they will blow your mind. I uh, I'm very proud of the work that uh, the team did. Thank you, Jen the man, always uh, supporting us. I'm 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 very very happy that I got an audience like this. Uh, by the way, so. Um, uh, this is like our YouTube channel. Uh, a lot of the things, because uh, people ask me a lot about certain things that we have already covered. So if you go to our website, this is our our, our channel, you will find uh, a very handsome man. That's me. All right. <laughs> so you will find uh, all the topics that we discussed. So, uh, for example, the simple past, the simple past, the simple past. We talked three times. Uh, present simple uh, describing feelings we talked about a lot of things this is me again 
All right. So we talked about a lot of things on our channel. So look, look how many, uh, 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 like live stream we had. It's 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 amazing. It's amazing. We did a lot of work together. That's uh, thanks to you also. Okay, let us go directly to auxiliary verbs. And my first question will be, what are auxiliary verbs to start with? What is an auxiliary verb? How is it different from any other verb? And let me, meanwhile, while you think about this question, let me read the chat because there, there, there is some discussion going on in the chat. I really always enjoy the discussion in the chat. Uh, fine, fine. Uh, uh, fine, uh, fine. I mean, totally fine. Uh, by the way, when we when we write, when we write, like when we write on the keyboard, and we make mistakes, we call those typos. Typos. So, uh, for example, imagine I want to write, for example, uh, my name uh, is, and I wrote it like this. I wrote it like this. I wrote it like this. So my name here is a typo. I just didn't didn't write it well. It, it's totally fine. They are they are they are okay. They are okay. Don't worry about them too much. So my question: We are going today to talk about auxiliary verbs. Auxiliary verbs. So what are auxiliary verbs to start with? What is what is an auxiliary? And and please, as you are thinking about this, don't forget to like this video if you don't mind so that it's it's suggested to other people and uh, it is recommended to other people uh, we would love more and more people to join us on this live stream and uh, join the conversation with us and uh, also uh, don't forget to subscribe of course if you know someone who would love to join us maybe share share this video with him uh, i mean so i mean says auxiliary verbs are verbs but added with the official grade verb like be have and do nice nice fisher i have no idea that's a great answer that's a good answer for me <laughs> because this is what we are going today today we are going you are going to have an idea about what are uh, auxiliary verbs all right so today you, you are going to have an idea but i mean is correct actually i mean is correct so auxiliary verbs are different from the official verb right they are different from the official verb uh, or we we don't call it the official verb, we call it the main verb, the main verb, right? Let me share with you the definition. Very simple definition is this. An auxiliary verb is a helping verb. So they are not the main verb, they just help the main verb, all right? So auxiliary verb, helping verb, because they are not the main verb, they just help the verb. Uh, great, absolutely, fantastic, fantastic, great. So I am writing a letter. Here, the main verb in the sentence that Amin gave us is right, is right. Okay, so the verb am is just helping the verb uh, right. Okay, let me give you two sentences, two more sentences. I will use your sentence, Amin, if you don't mind, uh, to give just the difference between a main verb and the helping verb. I am, all right, I am writing. Okay, so I will write two sentences so that we can understand what is the difference between a main verb and uh, an auxiliary verb? So, in 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 this in this example that I gave you, so I am a teacher. The only verb that we have is the verb to be. So here, the verb to be is the main verb, because there is no other verb. But in the second sentence, I am writing. Uh, the verb to be is just an auxiliary verb that is there to help the verb. Uh, uh, writing okay sophia is giving us another verb which is or another sentence which is i'm working i'm working and she is giving us like the short form of the verb work uh, or, or the verb be great so what are the auxiliary verbs that you guys know what are the helping verbs that you already know i mean already mentioned some well them not some uh, great I am a teacher here. The verb is be exactly Hamza. Absolutely. That's what I was explaining. You are absolutely great. So in I am the teacher or I am a teacher or I am happy or she is my friend. Here, the verb to be is the main verb. All right. Because there is just one verb. But in another one, in, in, in the other sentence, I am writing, I am working. There are two verbs. The main verb, write, work, play, etc. And then the main verb. 
uh, I need. Yes, sometimes we can consider need also a an auxiliary verb. Yes, in some cases, uh, but I, I didn't include it today because I want to focus on just three main verbs. They are the main auxiliary verbs that we have in English, actually. Amin says, do you pay attention to your teacher? I hope you are, you, you guys are, at least. <laughs> uh, indeed, yes. Um, Jan the man, that's a very good sentence. So you gave us an example, very good example, actually. Uh, yes, so do. Well, in English, there are three main uh, auxiliary verbs. All right. There are there are others that we can consider auxiliary verbs like need, like uh, make, like. But, but the first, the, the main ones are three, and these are the main verbs. The main auxiliary verbs that we have are uh, uh, be the verb to be, uh, do, all right, and have. The verb to have, the verb to be, the verb to do. These are the main auxiliary verbs that we have in English. Let me see what Pamela is uh, saying. So Pamela says, the auxiliary verb are a type of verb that takes a supportive role in a sentence second to the main verb. Very, very uh, like uh, elaborate definition. It's very clear, very, very simple, very straightforward also. Uh, so it, it, it goes it goes with this it, with this one. So supportive meaning it's a helping verb, right? So auxiliary verb simply means a uh, helping verb. All right. Hamza is giving us another one, which is have. Yes, uh, I have just eaten. I have just eaten. By the way, for the verb to have, you will find uh, more details in the uh, present perfect in the perfect uh, sessions. All right. Um, okay. Yes. So I said we have three main auxiliary verbs: uh, be, do, and have. Let's go through them one by one. And discover what e what each one is about. All right, let me just type this one. Okay, so the first one is the verb to be. What are the roles of the verb to be as an auxiliary verb? When we use the verb to be as an auxiliary verb, what are the roles that it plays? Okay, please, please. <laughs> Uh, share it, uh, please. If you are not sure about something, share it with us, and then we can like discuss it together. All right. Uh, even if you are not sure if something is correct or is not correct, you are you don't know, you are hesitant. Don't hesitate. Share with us, and then we can discuss all of us. Uh, Hamza says that we use the present or the verb to be for uh, the continuous form of verbs. You are absolutely correct, Hamza. Absolutely correct. To be or not to be, the very famous saying, yeah, the very famous uh, uh, sentence by uh, Shakespeare, if I'm not mistaken. In, I think, Othello, I'm, I'm not sure. But, but yeah, very famous sentence, to be or not to be, that is the question. I have been climbing this mountain. Where is the main auxiliary verb? Ah, okay. Uh, here we have two auxiliary verbs. Uh, well, the main verb is very clear. It's climb, all right? It's climb climbing but the auxiliary verbs here you have two uh, in the sentence that amin gave us there are two auxiliary verbs have and be have it expresses one thing and be it expresses another thing uh, can you give me an example hamza of this so we use it with an adjective can you give me an example of when do we use the verb to be with an example as an auxiliary verb give me an example because i need to explain to you something i have a little rabbit here i really love it Right, it's holding a carrot. I really love this. I have it by my desk. It's it's really really well well made. <laughs> I really like it. Can you give us an example, Hamza, of uh, the verb to be used with an adjective, but as an auxiliary verb? Let's see. Let me drink my coffee and then I will wait for Hamza's example before I proceed. All right, I mean, yeah, it's very beautiful. <laughs> I, 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 by the way, I love to collect these toys. So I have this toy, I have this one. I, I, I really love to collect them. <laughs> so as I'm waiting for you guys, I'm always looking at them. And uh, yes, there is a hippopotamus here. There is a chicken here. Oops, it's it fell. So there is a chicken. So yeah. <laughs> yes, so uh I'm great. Great. 
Nice. <laughs> I am great. Uh, Hamza, is this what you mean? Because here, notice, we don't use the verb to be with an adjective as the auxiliary verb. Because in this kind of sentences, the verb to be is the main verb. Okay, if I say, for example, I am happy. I am happy today. I am happy. Uh, here, the verb to be is, there is an adjective happy, but the verb to be here is the main verb, actually. So the first use of the verb to be uh, as an auxiliary verb is, like you guys said, in the continuous or in progressive, what we call progressive, right? We say continuous or progressive. Uh, for example, in the present, I say am is R plus verb ing. For instance, I am learning English. The main verb is learn, and the helping verb that supports it is am, the verb to be in the present. They are singing. The main verb is sing, but the verb to be here is supporting it. Okay, it's supporting it. Uh, in the past also, so we have past continuous, present continuous, future continuous. So in the present continuous, we use am, is, are. In the past continuous, we use was or were. For instance, uh, he was sleeping. The main verb here is sleep. And the supporting verb or auxiliary verb is was, right? The verb to be. We were watching TV. We were watching TV. So that's the second form of the continuous, which is past continuous. And the last one is future. The future we use will be, will be. For instance, uh, I don't want to go out today. I will be sleeping. I will be. So here it is continuous because it's followed by verb ing, right? Uh, so I can say she will be reading a book. She will be reading a book. So it's a long action. Uh, so this is the second form of, or the first form of the verb, uh, the verb to be, or the first uh, function of the auxiliary be, progressive or continuous. Let me see what Julia is saying. Julia, I'm on the cloud nine today because I have sound sleep uh, and square meal in the morning. Nice. Examples, Julia. <laughs> Great. Uh, we can say we can say Julia because I had I had because it's in the past right now. Uh, I had sound sleep, right? I had it uh, and the meal. But very beautiful example. It's helping verb. Pamela says it's a helping verb. I completely agree with you, Pamela, because uh, it's not the main verb. Uh, let's take sentence number one as an example. I am learning English. The main verb here is learn, and the uh, we are helping it with the verb to be to express the progressive form or the continuous form. So we say, I am learning. I hope the first form is clear because the second form can be a little bit difficult. So uh, pay, pay attention with me. Let me give you something. I eat a banana every day. Sir, there are two types of verbs. Uh, what are they? What are they? Indeed, there are well, there are a lot of, actually. But what are what are the two types that you are talking about, Emmy? What are the two types? Uh, let me go back to this example. Uh, I eat a banana every day. So this is the subject is I, the main verb is eat, the object is banana, and the time is every day. So that's how we divide the sentence. Subject I, verb eat, a banana is the object. Every day is the time expression. Uh, my question to you now, imagine you put you put a banana in the fridge. You put your banana in the fridge. And when you came back to eat it, someone already ate the banana. Someone already took it. And you don't know who took the banana. What can you say? Uh, of course, there are modal verbs, for example. Hamza already mentioned modal verbs. Modal verbs. There are modal verbs also. So there are main verbs, auxiliary verbs, modal verbs. I'm not sure if there are any more. <laughs> is do. Where? Um, but I, I, I don't understand which, which example uh, you are talking about. Hamza, could you please explain to us? So I was saying, I uh, eat a banana every day. And someone took the banana you don't know who took the banana so you you can say my banana what my banana what what can you say i eat a banana every day 
I put this banana in the fridge so that I can eat it later. But someone came and took it. Someone came and ate it. What can I say? What can I say? Using the verb to be, by the way. So I can say, oh, my banana. What? Fantastic job, Hamza. Fantastic job. My banana was eaten or was taken. Let me see. Oh, wow. Wow. You guys already figured it out. My banana was eaten. You guys were very fast. I didn't expect you guys will know the answer this fast. So you can say someone had my banana. I completely agree with you. Or we can say my banana was taken. Artsyam, where have you been? How are you doing? Yes, you are correct. Was stolen or was taken or was eaten? Julia, I have everyday breakfast including fruits. It, nice. Yes. That's the verb to be. I, I, the verb to have. <laughs> All right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, Hamza. That's what we call the passive voice. The passive voice. And that's actually the second use of the verb to be. So the passive voice is when we start the sentence with the object. So the original sentence is someone took the banana. Let me write it for you guys so you'll understand what's going on. Someone took the banana. Right. Someone took the banana. So uh, I don't know who is this someone. So I can say the banana was taken. Okay. Let me share this with you. So I can say uh, someone took the banana, right? Or the banana was taken. So we start with the object of the sentence. Okay. We start with the object of the sentence. So uh, yeah. So that's the passive voice. And in the passive voice, we use the present simple, all right? We use the present simple. Or use, we use the verb to be. Sorry, I'm, I'm mistaken. We use the verb to be, I wanted to say. We use the verb to be. Okay, so uh, how do we use the verb to be? We use it either in the present. And by the way, don't worry if you don't understand the passive voice very clearly now. Because I will dedicate like two or three sessions just for, for the passive voice. It's very important. It's a little bit complicated. It needs some, some explanation. That's why I will not explain it a lot today because today I want to focus just on auxiliary verbs. But I promise you guys, I will make like two or three sessions or three live streams just dedicated to passive voice so that you will understand it very, very well, right? Okay, let me see what Amin is saying. Passive voice, we don't know the subject indeed. Uh, or if we don't, or if we know, we add the banana was taken by exactly, I mean, exactly. That's exactly it. So I can say the banana was taken. Well, the passive voice actually, as I mean said, we use it when we don't know the subject. We don't know who did it. Someone take it. So the banana was taken. I don't know who took it. Or sometimes we want to, we, we use the passive voice. Uh, to give more importance to the action itself rather than who did it. I don't care who did it. The, the important thing is that the action happened. All right. So I give info or I emphasize the uh, action itself. V fantastic job. You, you guys surprised me today, by the way. You surprised me because I didn't expect you that you guys already know the passive voice. So I'm very happy. This means that when we talk uh, about the passive voice, you guys already have the basis, already have the basis. We just need to elaborate some more. So let me give you some more example about the passive voice. So in the present, I can say my father is respected. Here, this means I respect my father. So if we want to reverse it, I say my father is respected. The main verb is respect and the auxiliary verb is uh, the verb to be. And by the way, for the continuous, the, ver the main verb is in ing. But in the passive voice, the main verb uh, is transformed into the uh, past participle. So, uh, so respect, respected. Uh, take, taken. Stole, stolen. Or steal, stolen. Right? So we, we change the verb into the passive voice or, or into the past participle. Next one. The diamond, the diamond was stolen. I don't know who stole the diamond. Someone stole the diamond. If we want to make it into the passive voice, we say the diamond was stolen. All right? So it was stolen. Fantastic. Uh, yes, very good example, Hamza. So they selected me. I was selected. I was selected. And notice uh, notice that Hamza, when he wanted to change the uh, uh, like the active form, they selected me 
to the passive form I was selected, he introduced, he added the verb to be. He added the auxiliary to be, was, okay? So always, when we want to uh, uh, transform a sentence into the passive voice, very important and obligatory, you should add the verb to be. You should add it. Indeed, and the verb becomes in the past participle. Don't worry about it now. I'm just say, I'm just telling you, like, don't worry about it. Uh, we will uh, uh, dedicate, I promise you, we will dedicate a whole live stream or two or three, whatever it takes, to the passive voice. It's a very important lesson. Ahmed Man just joined us. Hello, Ahmed Man. Welcome to the live stream. We are talking about auxiliary verbs, just to put you guys, or anyone who have just or who has just joined us, let me put you in the picture. Uh, today, we are talking about auxiliary verbs auxiliary verbs we said auxiliary verbs are uh, helping verbs are uh, they are helping verbs they are not the main verb they just help the main verb right and the first auxiliary verb that as we said we there are three main auxiliary verbs the verb to be the verb to do the verb to have and uh, we are so we started with the verb to be we said there are two main uses for auxiliary be uh, the first one is the progressive or the continuous right for example uh, i am working so work is the verb the main verb and Am is just helping it. And the, the other use is uh, uh, passive voice. Passive voice is when we want to focus on the action and not on the subject of the action. Um, oh, nice. Ashur Matov is here as well. I, shall I repeat again? <laughs> shall I repeat what I have just said? Someone eat my meal, become my meal, is eaten. Uh, uh, this one, yes, because uh, normally it should be in the past. I should be someone ate my meal in the past and the passive voice should be someone ate my meal but uh, since you are um, uh, since you you use the, the present in the first one so i'm i'm okay with that uh, a passive voice will be done <laughs> exactly it will be covered i promise uh, all right uh, ashur matov is here hello to you ashur matov today we are talking about uh, 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 auxiliary verbs, so I will I will repeat just from here. Uh, pass, uh, uh, auxiliary verbs, they are helping verbs that help verbs. And uh, we are uh, uh, now with the verb to be. So you, we, we just did the verb to be. Um, you can finish with this, like the, the, the live stream, and then you can go back and uh, cover the movie. Uh, the second auxiliary verb is uh, the verb to do, is the verb to do. Uh, my question to you guys, when do we use do but as an auxiliary as an auxiliary let me give you an example i did my homework i did my homework by the way here did is not an auxiliary verb it is the main verb because there is no other verb in the sentence okay uh, we call it an auxiliary verb when it 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 appears with another verb which is the main one Fantastic job. Yes, Hamza, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, can you give us an example? Uh, give us an example. Okay. Oh, nice. Nice. So Hamza covered the two main ones. <laughs> All right. The two main uses of the verb or of the auxiliary uh, do. The main one is indeed for the negative. Uh, I eat, I like coffee. I like coffee. I'm drinking it actually as we are speaking. I'm drinking coffee. It's, it says coffee actually on the mug. It says coffee. <laughs> okay, I, I really love coffee. Um, I love coffee. So uh, if I want to say negative, negative, someone doesn't like coffee. Uh, we can't say I not like coffee or I likened coffee that does not exist in English. To To express negative, we should obligatory. We should add the verb to do. We should add the auxiliary do. Uh, nice. This is an example. I prefer coffee, but I don't like tea. All right. So the uh, the first use of the auxiliary to do is for the negative. We cannot form the negative of mean verbs without uh, like uh, adding the auxiliary do. Uh, so let's see. In the present, we add uh, uh, doesn't or don't. Uh, don't. We use it with I, you, uh, uh, they, we, uh, uh, and you. And the doesn't, we use it with he, she, it. All right? So I can say, I don't like coffee. I do like coffee, by the way. This is just an example. Uh, 
nice, nice, nice. This is the past, by the way, Ahmed man. This is the past. So for the past, we use didn't. Uh, so uh, I don't like coffee and she doesn't enjoy pop music. She doesn't enjoy pop music. So uh, this is the negative. This is the, the first use of the auxiliary verb. Uh, the second use is for the past, or still, for the negative, if we want to negate the past, we say didn't, for all the pronouns. So I can say, Emma didn't attend the wedding. Emma didn't attend the wedding. All right. So here, the main verb is attend, and the, the negative in the past is didn't. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Ahmed Man also gave us an example. I didn't like it. Hamza says, do you want a, cu a cup of coffee? Uh, uh, do you want a cup of coffee? This is, of course, the um, uh, the past, or or this is the second use, which is questions, questions. All right, we cannot ask a question without adding the verb to do. I can say, for example, I like coffee. If I want to ask you, what can I say? Like you coffee? No, that's that's not what we say. That's not what we say. So I can say. Do you? So I add do before the verb. Thank you so much, Teresa. I, I really appreciate your remark. I think this is your first time probably with us. So thank you so much for the kind remark. And, and please, for those of you who have just joined, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please make, make sure you subscribe so that you can uh, be notified each time we have a new live stream. We have two actually, two live stream every week. One on Wednesday, which is vocabulary and one on Saturday, which is grammar. So make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and maybe like this live stream, please, <laughs> because it really helps. Because when you like it, it is recommended to other people who may need it. They may need this video. They may need to understand. Uh, 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 yes. OK, so as I said, the first use of the auxiliary verb, the helping verb do, is uh, negative. I don't like this. I don't drink coffee. She doesn't uh, uh, listen to pop music. Or the question. Uh, do you like coffee? Did she come yesterday? Did he call you yesterday? Yes. Uh, do you like coffee? Uh, Julia, do you want a fancy copper? I, I don't like coffee. Nice. Oh, no way. <laughs> so, Jen fell asleep in the middle of the live stream. Come on, Jen, the man. Come on, man. All right. Uh, will also an auxiliary verb. Uh, will is what we call a model verb. A model verb. I'm not sure if you can consider it an auxiliary verb, but it's a model verb. Uh, uh, model verbs also, we will dedicate another live stream for uh, model verbs. Uh, Amin gave us an example, which I really love. Amin says, I do care about it. I do care about it. Okay, I do care about it. Is this the negative? Or is this the question? Or is this something else? Because here he is using the auxiliary do. And it's not the main verb. The main verb is care. So indeed, this is the verb to do, uh, like uh, acting as an auxiliary verb. So. What's the deal? What's the deal here? What is this? The sentence is correct, by the way. Thank you, Amin. Very good sentence. Very good sentence. I do care about it. So we said the auxiliary verb has two main uses. Negative and a question. I say, I don't like you. I, I do like you, by the way, guys. I don't like it. All right. I like it. I don't like coffee. Or I don't like tea. Uh, or... Question, do you like coffee? Do you want me to open the window? So always we use the verb to do. My wedding will be arranged by my friend. That's uh, will, all right. Or that be also. Uh, do uh, affirmative but response or answer of question do you care? Well, the use that you are talking about, I mean, actually is the third use of the verb or of the auxiliary do, and we call it emphasis. Emphasis. Emphasis is when we want to uh, uh, to focus on something, to like say it is true, all right, to confirm it. For example, I do like coffee. I like coffee. I do like coffee. And as you said, we can like uh, add it as an answer. Did you do you like coffee? I do like coffee. So you are absolutely correct. But we call this emphasis. Emphasis. Emphasis is want to confirm something. 
want to uh, emphasize that it's true. She does speak French. I'm sure. I'm, I'm like confirming this. She does speak French. All right. I hope this this third use is clear for you guys. Last or the, in the past, I can say I did see him yesterday. So I'm confirming. I'm I'm emphasizing the verb to see. I'm emphasizing I did see him. All right. So I I, I hope this is clear for you guys. And of course, uh, Julia and Pamela are giving us amazing. Uh, examples in the chat uh, I don't encourage you smoking because it will harm your health especially the lungs I do understand this lesson beautiful beautiful example I sure much of I really love that example thank you okay so so far let me please go back because I want you guys to understand everything very well before we finish we said in English an auxiliary verb let me see the question first before uh, how do i use auxiliary verb to emphasize an answer could you give me an example uh, sure i can give you an example so i can say uh, do you like coffee i will use the same example so that it's it's uh, yes i like coffee okay for example Someone asks you, do you like coffee? Do you, by the way, do here we use the auxiliary do to ask the question. That's one use of do. Uh, in the answer, I can say, yes, I like coffee. Here, I just answered very normally. But if I want to emphasize, to put more pressure or more, more light on the fact that I like coffee, what can I say? I do like coffee. All right. I do like coffee. All right. It's just a matter of emphasis. So do adds more pressure on the verb. We are confirming the verb even more. Indeed, yes, emphasizing. Please do attend. Do attend, please. Please do attend. So I'm emphasizing. I'm, I'm asking you, right? Okay, so as I said in this example, do you like coffee? I can say I like coffee. But if I want to add more, more like confirmation, I can say I do like coffee. Uh, Erica, I hope this example is clear for you. Uh, exactly, indeed, indeed. We can say, I really like coffee, or I like coffee very much. All of these, they add emphasis. I completely agree with you. I, I like coffee very much. But uh, really and very much, they are not auxiliary verbs. And today, we are just focusing on auxiliary verbs. So, again, I'm just showing you uh, how we can... Uh, uh, add emphasis just using auxiliary verb do. Uh, otherwise, there are other ways in which we can add uh, uh, like uh, uh, emphasis. Uh, sometimes we can also use the verb in or the, the the word indeed. Do you like coffee? Indeed, I like coffee. All right. This also adds uh, uh, emphasis, but it is not an auxiliary verb. So today, I just want to keep it just uh, like uh, related to exactly. Sometimes I can just say I do. Do you like coffee? I do. Uh, same thing to someone, <laughs> all right. Uh, when people want to get married, they say, will you marry me? Or oh, wait, uh, in the church, they say, do you take uh, this person as your husband? They say, I do. Or do you take this lady as your wife? I do, all right. It's confirmation. Uh, I do. Yes, we can say, yes, I do. Or no, I don't. Again, that's auxiliary verb. That's an auxiliary verb because the, the main verb is the verb to uh, to like. I hope it's clear. Let me go back. Yes, last one is the verb to have. So the last auxiliary that we have, so we covered the ver auxiliary uh, be, the auxiliary do, and now we want to cover the auxiliary uh, have. So for the auxiliary have, my question is, when do we use it as an auxiliary? Again, let me give you an example of the verb to have, where the verb to have is the main verb, not the helping verb. I have two cats. Here, we are using the verb to have, but it is not the main verb. It is not the auxiliary verb. It is the main verb, because there is no other verb. Okay? Perfect. Perfect. Like this. So in the second sentence that Amin gave us, I have talked to you. I have talked to you. Uh, here, uh, have is not the main verb, like the sentence that I gave you. Here, it is the main verb. Here, it is not the main verb. The main verb here is uh, uh, talk. So have is just a helping verb. Uh, Hamza says, 
uh, we use auxiliary have for the perfect tenses. Perfect tenses. And that's absolutely the main use of the verb to have. All right, the main use. So we use the verb to have uh, for, uh, let me see. Okay, that's a big mistake. Uh, okay, so we, we use auxiliary verb just for the perfect, just for the perfect, not for uh, something else, not for nothing else. So that was just, that's just stayed there from the previous one. So yeah, so this is the only uh, will for, for, for the perfect continuous uh, Hamza. Uh, here we have two aspects. We have the perfect and we have the continuous. For the perfect, we use have. And for the continuous, if you remember from the first auxiliary verb that we have seen, we use be. So this is the example, Hamza, that you gave me earlier. I have been using. Here we have two auxiliary verbs. L let, me, let me write it for you. I have been teaching English since 2020. Or since... All right, since 2020, for example. So, I have been teaching English since 2020. And uh, uh, so, not really. I'm, I'm coming back to you, Sophia. I'm coming back. In this example that you can see on the board or on the screen, on the board. I'm not in the classroom. <laughs> yes. So, here, the main verb is teach. There is the first auxiliary verb is be. It expresses here continuous, that I have been teaching continuously. The second verb is perfect, which is have, or the second auxiliary is have. So this is the past or the present. Perfect, continuous. Uh, for your example, uh, Sophia, for, the, for your example, uh, the verb to have is not a, an auxiliary verb. It's the main verb, actually, because there is no other verb. There is no other verb. There is just one verb, which is... Uh, the auxiliary, or, which is have. Uh, Sophia, please let me know if this is clear for you. <laughs> because I, I hope I, I, I'm not speaking very fast. Uh, okay, so for the perfect, we use have. So have, we use it only for the perfect. Uh, there are two types of perfect. There is present perfect, for example, uh, has or have, for example. We have seen this movie before. So the verb to see is the main verb, and the verb have is the uh, auxiliary verb. And we have, he hasn't played football since 1990. The main verb is play, and the auxiliary verb or the helping verb is have, uh, conjugated in the present, uh, hasn't, or, and then in the negative hasn't. Uh, the, in the past, we used had for all the pronouns. So I can say, the train had already left uh, when we arrived to the station. And the, please remember that the verb to have, uh, when we use it for the perfect, it is uh, followed by... Uh, 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 past participle. So your 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 example, Artyom. Uh, uh, you should say I have met. Let me let me write it. All right. So the verb to meet in the past participle is met. So meet met. Uh, uh, sir, can I have combined three auxiliaries? L let me see. Give it a try. Give it a try. <laughs> Give it a try. Uh, yes, Sophia. I hope. I hope it's clear because uh, let's let's look at the example, uh, uh, Sophia, that the uh, art team gave you. I have met two children. So I have two children. Have is the main verb. So it is not an auxiliary verb. But in this example by art team, I have met two children. Here the main verb is meet, and the auxiliary verb is indeed have. So I, please let me know if this is very clear for you. Uh, okay. Nice, nice. I have been waiting for you uh, for a long time. Nice example, Ahmed. Nice example. You combine two auxiliary verbs. Have and be. Have and be. Uh, very, very brilliant. Okay. So... We move, I think, to the exercises. Uh, let's move to the exercise. Uh, but before we move to the exercises, just very, very, uh, like, quick recapitulation, or what I want you to keep in mind is that for the auxiliary verbs, we use, we use let me make myself smaller so that you can see this very clearly. Uh, we use the verb to be for the progressive or the continuous. We use the verb to do for the negative or for the question, 
and we use the verb to have for the perfect. Uh, I hope these are clear for you guys. Uh, of course, we also use the the verb to be. Let me let me write them on a, on a different one, and then I will share it. Uh, Hamza, I'm coming back to your uh, example. Let me just finish this. Let me see. Oh wow! Oh wow! A lot of examples in the chat. <laughs> so let me go one by one. I have been waiting, so we said Ahmed used to. I have raised two children and they have grown up. Fantastic job, Julia. Fantastic uh, job with your, your example and also raising the kids. So I can say, I have raised, uh, this is raise and plus have and also have grown up. Uh, Sophia, I have been working in the same job for over six years. Uh, now we are talking, uh, Sophia, now we are talking. Um, I have been watching or I have been teaching English. It has too. Indeed, but uh, uh, I mean, um uh, is uh, challenging himself to use all three in one sentence i do have been studying all the time uh, not really i mean we can't say that <laughs> we can't say that we can say i do have been it's it's not correct and haven't even finished the first homework and it is very easy and i don't have to finish it uh so the first one it's not correct i do have been no uh, but the the rest of the, your sentence it is totally correct it is totally correct Ahmed or Ashur Matov, I have had a great grammar lesson on stream. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, very good example, by the way, uh, Ashur Matov, because here in your example, uh, have is the main verb and also have is the auxiliary, right? So have, the first have is the auxiliary and had is the main verb. Let me just add the, add the, the other uses so that you can probably take a screenshot or I can share it with you on, in the... Uh, in the whatsapp uh, channel uh, because i didn't include all of them um okay let me do this okay and we said also we use it for okay some instead and Okay, uh, let me share with you something, please. All right, so I just added some more examples. So we said, in English, we have three main auxiliary verbs. The first one is be, we use it for two main things. Progressive or continuous, so we say progressive or continuous. So I am working, I am studying, he is learning. I was uh, looking, I was reading. And we use it for the passive, the passive. My hat was stolen, my phone was broken. Uh... Uh, our house uh, was painted. Okay. The verb to do, we have three uses for the verb to do. Two are the, the main one, important one. Uh, so negative and question. For the negative, we say, I don't know this man. I don't like coffee. She doesn't listen to pop music. A question we can say, do you study here? Do you understand? Uh, do we... Uh, have an agreement and the last one is emphasis i do live here you do have the right to do that right so it's uh, emphasis last one is the uh, auxiliary have and for the auxiliary have we simply use it for um we use the auxiliary verb for for uh, like the the perfect the perfect aspect so uh, i can say i have been uh, i have seen this movie before uh, they have watched uh, the the series um uh, all right so i had had lunch with my family before i went out nice example I had had yes same same form um thank you thank you ashur matov i'm very happy when you guys tell me that everything is clear that's really really uh, uh, like makes me very very happy all righty so let's move to a little exercise in this first exercise by the way guys you you only need to tell me you only need to tell me what is the function? What is the function of the auxiliary verb? That's it. Uh, for example, number one, she is becoming a talented artist. What is the auxiliary verb? And what is the function of it? Uh, of course, uh, we know that this is the verb to be, is. So what is the function here? What is the function of the verb to be? Let me know. <clears throat> 
I have had two pounds. Uh, I, uh, well, Ahmed uh, man, uh, uh, any verb that comes after the verb to have should be in the past participle. So you should say, I have had, all right? So the second verb or the main verb should be in the past participle. Where am I? Let me do this. Okay, this way I think it's still. Okay, so the first one, Amin says it's a progressive. Uh, same Hamza says the first one is progressive. I completely agree. Number one is progressive indeed. Uh, continuous so it's the present continuous number two do you like ice cream do you like ice cream where is the mod where is the auxiliary verb and what is its function so what is the auxiliary verb and what is the function of the auxiliary verb mm -hmm. Number two. Okay, so Amin says it's a question, or uh, Hamza says it's a question. Yes, so do you? Amin says it's a question. Two. Uh, Julia, I have been studying English for ages, but I haven't accomplished my first homework. It it do. We say it does. Good, but it's we say it does. You are correct, but the use is correct, but just the form is not correct. So we say it does. It does seem easy for me, but I don't finish uh, it on time we say on time but very very good example you used i think all three of them yes you used all three auxiliaries <laughs> nice uh nice okay so number two do you like ice cream the auxiliary verb is do and it is in the past in in the it's a question like uh, hamza said like amin said and like hamza said as well uh, number two they have visited uh, paris several times so it is perfect so present perfect they have all right uh, Hamza already finished everything. <laughs> exactly. Sukram. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I, I will go through them. I will go through them uh, because I think you guys already understood everything. So he was studying for his exam. Again, this is uh, uh, the verb to was, uh, the verb to be is the, the auxiliary verb and it is progressive. Um all right, let's continue on the topic, please. Uh, uh, Sophia, do you mean that you want like uh, more, uh, more, uh, more sessions about this? Is this what you mean? Uh, he was studying. We said it's uh, progressive or continuous. She doesn't enjoy spicy food. Hamza or Hamza, yes, said it's negative. Yes, this is negative. My dog does love his toy. This is the verb to do, and it is emphasis. Emphasis. We say, my love, my, my dog does love. My phone was stolen at the bus station. So here, what is it? The last one? <laughs> last one? Yes, okay. Passive voice. Yes, passive voice. Uh, Hamza says he forgot number six. We call it emphasis. I will write it for you. And we say emphasis like this. Emphasis. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, of of course, Pamela, you will find you will find the WhatsApp group for the WhatsApp and uh, the WhatsApp. Well, it's a channel. Uh, let me go back. No, share this one instead. Okay. Okay. So, Pamela, if you go either, you you will find the WhatsApp channel in the chat, or you can go to our website. Let me show you our website here, and you will find uh, here whatsapp channel here here you will find whatsapp channel right so it's on the top and you can join us and uh, we share a lot of stuff there actually okay last thing that we will do is a little exercise i have for you five sentences and you need to finish them with one of the auxiliaries that we have seen today julia thank you yes i have present perfect thank you julia uh, it's it's fine yeah pamela it's totally fine uh, so you can join either from the chat or, or from the description. The description in this live stream, you will find the link. Just click on it. It will take you to WhatsApp. Or you can go to our website. Of course, we have there some uh, books, some free books that you can find here. In this book section, you will find free ebooks. Otherwise, the channel here, the WhatsApp channel, you will find it right there and you can join it. Uh, okay, so here I have sentences for you and the... Uh, 
Uh, nice. Mong, Monkey Kong. All right, Monkey Kong. Oh, very difficult to pronounce your name. <laughs> number one, uh, he says number one, it's R. So the students are. Or, yes, exactly. So uh, we, we will use actually the verb to be, but in the past because we have four hours yesterday. So it's in the past, yesterday. Okay. Number two, where you been? Where you been? Have. All right. Have. Uh, sure, sure, Sophia, if you want more exercises on this topic, I, I don't mind. I don't mind. I can't say no to you guys. <laughs> How, where have you been? Great. Yes, the second one, where have you been? Number three, Sarah enjoyed the concert yesterday. It was boring. Enjoy the concert uh, yeah, last night. It was boring. So what is here? It was boring. So if it is boring, will you enjoy it? Do you think you will enjoy it then? Did. Hamza, do you think you will enjoy the concert if it is boring? It is boring. Meaning like, like it, <laughs> it's, it's not fun. <laughs> All right. So think again. Think again, think again. Okay, all right, nice, nice. Now we are talking, <laughs> nice. Poor du Julia already answered like everything. <laughs> nice. Uh, good. Uh, Monkey Kong. Nice, nice way to write Monkey Kong. Uh, number four, have. Uh, well, uh, remember, please, uh, uh, what follows each auxiliary? For example, if you find ing, this means that this should be the verb to be. If there is ed, this means that it should be the verb to be or the verb have, all right? So pay attention to these things. They are very important. Okay, last one. The new movie released. Well, uh, can we say has released? Is the movie going to release, Hamza? What do you think? Nice. Julia says number five is was. Was released. Very good. That's the correct answer for number five. Are you ready for the answer? I will share with you the answer. Very had nice, uh, but you forgot to, to write for me the name or the, the the number, because I can see the answers. Nice Hamza, nice Monkey Kong, great. Uh, but just uh, please, guys, don't forget to write for me the number so that I know which 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 sentence are you talking about. Otherwise, these are the answer. So we will say, the students. We're working because we have first ing, so this means it should be the verb to be, it's progressive. And we have last night so, or last year or yesterday, so the verb should be in the past. So was or were working. Number two, where you been? Here we have the verb be in the past perfect. So it should be uh, uh, where have you been? Number three, Sarah enjoy. So it, it's either did enjoy or do enjoy or does enjoy. Uh, but here it was boring, so it tells us it's, it she did not enjoy it. I did finish my homework. And the last one, the new movie was released. This is the passive voice, actually. This is the passive voice. Uh, I will give you guys actually five more minutes. In these five more minutes, I want you to write for me your own sentences. Your own sentences. Yes, please. Yes, yes. If if you can share this video with your friends, I will really appreciate it. Otherwise, if you can't share it or don't want to share it, uh, at least make sure you like it. That That's very, very helpful because it will be recommended to other people. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure you do subscribe to it. That, that helps us a lot. And of course, activate that uh, notification bell because you will be notified each time uh, we are having a new live stream because we have two live streams every week, actually. Uh, now, guys, it's up to you. It's your turn. You should now write for me your own sentences. So please make sure 
to write some sentences in the chat before we close this live stream. Uh, as you guys are writing these uh, sentences, I want to share with you some uh, some few things. Uh, the first one, of course, is a reminder of our website where you can find free ebooks that you can either read on our website or that you can like download on your device. This is this is the uh, name of the website, uh, wuenglish.com. It's great. It's well well. Uh, well uh well developed well organized you will really like it the other thing that i want to share with you is our youtube channel so in, on our youtube channel you will find a very handsome man uh, that's me all right and uh, you will find a lot of topics you will find the future for example here is the future we did two sessions about the future three sessions about the past perfect or the present perfect three sessions this is what uh, we did like purpose. We talked about holidays. We talked about school. So you will really enjoy our live streams. If not, you can go to our video section and you will find like uh, a lot of topics. You can find, oh, like, like a video about uh, Cristiano and his uh, wife. You can find Hillary Clinton. You will find there's like uh, World War I, uh, Kennedy, GF Kennedy, a lot of, a lot of things on our channel. All right. And they are well. Uh, uh, well read. Lastly, if you can, you want to visit my YouTube channel, my personal YouTube channel. This is it, Hamza Jat. Uh, you will find some amazing videos, especially for those of you who speak Arabic. Because in my channel, I do speak in English and in Arabic, in my personal channel, which is this. Uh, you will find the link for all of these things in the chat or, or in the description box for uh, this uh, video. So please pay, uh, pay a visit to that. Let me go back to you guys and see what uh, what have you been writing. Uh, I'm asking my friend to give me his pen that he has bought yesterday. I will be so grateful if he did. Nice one. I'm watching a video on YouTube. Nice. Pamela, I think you are still talking about the exercise. So uh, you can finish the exercise and then join here. Uh, I don't like pizza. Very simply, I don't like pizza, right? Uh, and Hamza also, did she turn up late uh, to the party? Great. Uh, just don't forget the, the, the question mark at the end. Because we are talking about a, a, a question. And with this, guys, we come to the end of this beautiful live stream. I can't explain or I can't express how much I really enjoyed this live stream. It was beautiful amazing more examples are coming i have studied english for more than six months uh, but but it's it 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 sounds like you have been studying it for years Hamza. actually your english is so good so thank you so much guys uh stay we stay like stay alert uh, we will uh, uh notify you of uh, the topic of wednesday's live stream it will be vocabulary so uh, maybe you can even like drop your your uh, uh suggestions in the chat not the not the chat but in the comment later when the video is like uploaded you can uh, give us your opinions about or your suggestions about the topics that you want to see for vocabulary thank you so much guys uh for uh, like the 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 all the uh, interaction and all the amazing uh, answers and the, the the beautiful examples i will see you on wednesday take care of yourselves and uh, have a great rest of the week.